Hey guys, it's Wally. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do the final homebrew Wednesday of 2019. So it's Tuesday nights, so tomorrow's homebrew Wednesday. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. So I've managed this year. I've done a homebrew Wednesday every week. Every week, I'm pretty sure every week. So I've done 52 of them. So. Um, I'm going to crack somewhat special beer to me. Um, this is a nondescript bottle, but this is a 22 ounce bottle of uh, Brett Kick Nate. So this is 100% Drop Kick Nate uh, fermented out with, uh, well, it's Drop Kick Nate, Grainville, um, Hop Schedule fermented with um, Brett C. So it's uh, WLP 645, I believe is what it is. Um, so yeah, it's been in the bottle now for, I think, probably well over a year. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and crack this one. It's been in the fridge for a couple days. I think about a week or two. I'll crack this one and uh, get into a glass and hopefully I don't make a mess. And uh, we'll talk about, you know, just talk about some stuff that I got accomplished that I feel like I've got accomplished this past brewing year. I smoke. Whoa. Pretty well carbonated. Let's put that back there. So yeah, I've got it's pretty carbonated. It's pretty clear. Um definitely the Brett C is all over the aroma. Smells delicious. So I'm gonna let the head die down. So this year, this past year, I brewed a lot. We'll see a lot of the same beer, right? Um, what I've done, I brewed a lot of the same IPA, um, same grain bill, um, same, same hop schedule, same yeast, just different hops, right? So hop combinations. So it's just been a pretty basic grain, been a pretty basic grist for me. Um, just all um, two row and um, a little bit of copper malt. Now, um, what I've discovered later on this year is that um, the copper malt really, depending on your water, this is a little bit of water chemistry we're talking about. I'm not going to get in the numbers, not going to get in the fancy words, but if you manipulate your water chemistry, like you're going to brew a, a New England style IPA, where you kind of push push the bitterness in the background, but you, you make it more malty, um, so then that really enhances that copper malt. So not a good thing for copper malt unless you want to make a brown ale um, or something. Something that's malty. It's supposed to be malty. Whew. That's getting funky. Um, so yeah, but it's it's all been the same. Um, and I do enjoy it, but I, that's when the water chemistry is set up more geared towards like a West Coast style beer. Then the copper malt there, it's got a little bit of biscuity kind of flavor in the background. Um, but it doesn't dominate everything and the hops really come through and the bitterness is obviously more. So, um, so and I've done... I didn't keep track. I don't. I need to do a better job. Maybe that's going to be my new my brew year's re resolution is to kind of keep track of what I do a little bit better as far as brews and keep track of numbers and all that stuff instead of just kind of winging it and just saying, oh, I'm going to brew again. So, um, but so, um, so yeah, I. Uh, I had three beers in a in a homebrew competition. They did okay. Nothing super fancy. Um, I entered into the SJ Ports cha um, challenge. I got second. I actually finished second in the SJ Port challenge. Can you believe that? That's crazy. I still can't believe it. Um, so um, yeah, I keep 
I've kept tweaking on my system, you know, adding little things, uh, learning little things more. Um, but yeah, mostly it's been been a lot of experimentation, not not crazy experimentation, um, just little stuff, you know, hot profiles. Um, um, I did brew some IPLs this year. Um, I did uh, the same yeast, the S23, and I brewed it, and I fermented at ale temperature, and I also fermented it at, at the lagering temperature. Now I use uh, the Brewerlosophy um, quick lagering technique, and like I say, S23 is um, at ale temperatures is very clean. Uh, it's very neutral, um, a lot like um, USO5. Now I don't know what would happen if the beer was to age, because um, obviously it's going to change as it gets older and um, it develops different characters as it gets older because the you know, hops drop out or maltiness kind of comes forward or it may drop out or depending on what goes on with it. So it, it could change. So I, I don't know that, but my experience. Been a long, long time since I had a bread beer, and that's the body's really kind of thinned down on it. Um, not that it's a, a really heavily bodied beer to begin with, but um, it's got it's got that kind of fruity kind of funk uh, that bread beers have. It doesn't. It's nowhere near. It's not. It's not dropkick made anymore. Um, you know, the galaxy and all that stuff. It's all gone. Um, it's just a bread bomb. There's a little bit, almost like a tart kind of grapefruit in the background. Um, so, um, so let's get back to talking about beer, about what I've done. Um, so, um, I don't know. I fucking totally lost chain of thought here, train of thought. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I mean, I haven't really. It's been a ton of experimentation, but nothing crazy. Um, did a collab uh, brew with uh, Matt Morris from um, Wrecked Brewing, which was pretty exciting. Um, I've still got still got some of that beer. Um, that beer for me is too dry, way too dry. It's not a bad beer. It's a good beer. But for my palate. Um, I think it's a bit dry. It just needs it needs something, maybe a little lactose, um, maybe something there to maybe ferment a little higher. Since it's saison yeast that we used, it really dried out. It just went down to almost nothing. Um, so, and this is bullshit, isn't? I can't. I need to write this stuff down, get everything going. So, going into uh, 2020, I think the first. The first beer I'm gonna brew, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and rebrew um, my SJ Pour beer, the my IPL, and I'm really gonna change. I'm kind of gonna tweak the water profile, and I'm not gonna do a whole lot to it. I'm gonna tweak it uh, more towards like a West Coast style instead of mine's neutral. It's pretty neutral. That beer's the water profile is kind of neutral. It's on the it's on the more bitter side. Of the of the water profile, but everything is kind of in that mid range where, um, y you know, it's not it's not going to overpower. The bitterness isn't going to come through because depending on your water profile now, if your water profile is geared a certain way towards like a West Coast style, you get more bitterness from the IBU perceived bitterness. Right now, follow me because I don't know a whole lot of what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm maybe maybe I'm wrong, but and as you get more maltiness, you don't quite perceive the bitterness as much still the same might be used it's just how it's perceived so um, I think that's the biggest issue with the uh, two brews ago the the um, I'll call it the brown ale the, the New England style um, IPA that finished more of a brown ale uh, because of the the malts that they have in there but um it's got copper malt in there just a half a pound in it it's really fighting for attention, and um, but it's actually drinking really good now. It's got a little bit of age on it, but it's the same IBU. It's the same IBU as the the IPL that I got second place in the um, SJ Pour Comp in, right? Same IBU level, about 55. 
Now, perceived IBU to the tongue, the nipple is a new, new, uh, let's see, new nipple. India Pale Lager. It's a new school kind of India Pale Lager, which, you know, it's an, it's an IPL, um, but it's all late edition stuff. It's all, um, it's um, new school hops. It's nothing really old school about it, so, you know, that's why I call it the nipple. Uh, new, new school India Pale Lager. So, um, but the IBUs are similar. They're the same. Um, with the beer gun on tap and I changed the water profile so that it was more along the lines of a New England style, right? Um, it keeps the haze, brings the malts kind of forward. Um, and um, yeah, it, your perceived bitterness is a lot less. That beer actually seems a little sweet. Now it did finish at about 1016, so it's a little bit sweeter than, than the IPL. <clears throat> Which it, I think it, it finishes like uh, 1012. 10:14, so it's not a whole lot of difference, but the water really changes everything, right? So, and I think that's where I'm kind of going to go this next year, 2020. Um, right now, I think I'm planning on entering the yeast experiment with the uh, um, brew tubers um, main brew guy. Um, he's going to put this on. I think I'm going to enter that in. Why? Because I've been kicking around for a while. Um, get an RO system for down here or just start purchasing um, water from Kroger whatever um, then um, so with his experiment everybody's going to use either distilled or RO water so everybody starts with a blank canvas um, so that's been something I've been wanting to do this will be a good reason or excuse to do so not to go out and purchase an RO system but um, I would probably go and just purchase water from Kroger in the five gallon uh, carboys, plastic carboys. So, um, so yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do um, going down the road here. <laughs> oh, excuse me, it's just kind of experiment. Dot play around with water a little bit, kind of get my understanding of water down more, because I, I, I've scratched the surface on water. So, um, I play around with water. Um, I've kind of got a basic understanding. Of, but I don't I don't really sit down and, and um, go through everything like I need to I don't check the I don't check my pH while I sparge and I'll check the pH um, once I'm in the boil kettle I don't check pH as I'm going into the fermenter um, basically the only thing I, I maintain is pH in the mash um, so I've got work to do um, yeah so I mean hopefully Hopefully this video makes sense because I'm really feeling like I'm gonna have to erase it and start a little bringing it because I'm I can't maintain can't maintain here. Um, so yeah, that's it for me, guys. Um, I'm gonna finish this beer, and which is dry as a freaking bone. Ugh. Woo! So dry. <clears throat> and um, what's the WLP 645, the Brett C, that's what I have in the carboy of the uh, that very first beer that I, I, I tried with the all Viking malt in the um, Pilsner malt with the um, flaked barley, flaked oats. So I'm going to see, I might check that at some point, but I think right now I'm going to um, probably, I may, uh, may keg the, I may keg my last beer here. Um, it's been cold crashing since Friday so should be pretty good all right guys um, hopefully this makes sense and um, I don't seem like a bumbling stumbling rambling idiot any more than usual all right guys uh, happy new year uh, be safe cheers I'll see you uh, see you next